And they tell us ain't no class war. Tell that to the working poor. Tell it to the dreary eyed souls on the assembly line. Tell it to those working mandatory overtime. Tell it to the post live juggling three jobs. Walking home late at night, worrying about getting robbed. Tell it to the immigrants on their way to or do the jobs that they tell us that we just won't do. Tell it to the kids raised up to be dummies. Cause they wasn't born in school districts with money. Tell it to the sweatshop girl with tears down her face. Disrespected and humiliated on a daily basis. Tell it to the crash shipping at the bus stop Tell it to the young brother getting hassled by the cops Tell it to the father who can't afford to get sick Tell it to the sister thinking I turned to tricks And tell it to the single mother now inside no Christmas Eve While the CEO got a 20 mil bonus up his sleeve We kid the world you live in where most folks never leave Howdy y'all and welcome back Apex, flat face trigger and forward set sear First trip to the range, and some issues, and hopefully some solutions. So if you're not an M&P nerd, this video may not be terribly interesting to you, but there are a couple of lessons. I'll try to keep this as short as I can, because the lessons at the end will sort of apply to any striker-fired polymer gun, and maybe any handgun in general. So, if you're not a regular viewer, uh, this gun is a 2009 manufactured m &P. It's an early 1.0. And I don't actually know how many rounds the gun has because I made changes and then different changes and then more changes and it's got a different barrel. And But the frame itself has probably around eight to 10,000 live rounds through it. And probably... 20 or 30,000, there's no telling how many dry presses, right? So, I've changed so many things on this gun, but two things that I never changed, the striker and the trigger bar. So hold those thoughts. So I put the forward set sear and flat face trigger kit in, took it to the range, had my buddies shoot it. I was shooting it. First hundred rounds, ran like a champ. It's like a cheat code. This trigger is amazing. And like even my buddies who had never shot this gun before, like picked it up and they're like, bang, just shooting the lights out. 25 yards on like eight inch targets. No problem. It was awesome. Opened up a second box and these were all hand loads, but opened up the second box and they're different. And for whatever reason, all of a sudden, it was Choke City. <laughs> now, I hadn't cleaned the striker channel in this, and I have no idea how long it's been. Years. So that was the first thing that jumped up. Well, the first thing that always is, maybe it's hard primers, right? I could tell it was the gun. But kind of smoky, been shooting lots of hand loads. Maybe the striker channel's dirty. It's a possibility. But before we even left the range, I started doing some Google Foo and come to find out it's a pretty common thing that comes up when people do the flatty. So then I'm like, ah, oh, it's the gun for sure. So I got it home, cleaned out the striker channel, and it was absolutely filthy. But put it back together and just started slowly kind of you know, resetting it and releasing and I would get a dead trigger. So at the range, I was getting, first it started with light primer strikes, and then I was getting light primer strikes and dead trigger, both. Like, what the hell? Like everything, it was like 100 rounds of greatness, and then just blah. So once I cleaned it all out really well, I would, I was, I would go to reset it, and it would just be a dead trigger. And it was like 50-50, like five out of 10 times. So, Take it all apart again and start looking at things. And I'm reading like old forums from 2013 and 2017 and, and trying to just like, what is the general consensus of what causes these things to happen when you've done the trigger upgrade? Now, it should be noted that the last time I took this to the range before putting in the flat face trigger, I did get out of 100 rounds, I got two, like two times it came up on, or maybe three times it came up on a dead trigger. It wasn't resetting. So, 
that is important data to factor into this whole thing. So, finally found that like magic thread, you know, an old forum thread that you find that's the one that's like, ah, that's what's going on. And I'm looking at my striker and holy hell, it's not right. <laughs> like, it's not right. So, jumped online, Midway USA, comes through with like 17 bucks, I think, for a replacement striker. And it's the whole assembly. So it's the, the spring, the striker, and the little cup, and all of it. And it was like 25 bucks shipped or whatever. So, yeah, I'm on that, right? But I'm still like, but what if it isn't that? And I kept coming across trigger bar adjustments. And it's the little round loop on the trigger bar that actually interfaces with the sear. And because it's a forward set sear, you've got some different geometry going on. So a common thing people do is they would bend it down. They would reshape the loop. They call it the shepherd's hook. More Googling and searching, I discovered that somewhere in the 20, early 20 teens, Smith & Wesson came out with what they call the H-stamped trigger bar, and it has a completely different like shape. So here is a view of my original, and underneath it is the H-stamped. So, found that at Brownells for like $11. <laughs> so, ordered that. So, for like shipping and everything, I'm in like 40 bucks for a new striker, new trigger bar, and I've already done the trigger bar install, and it was ugly, and I didn't even try to film it. If you're an M&P person, you know what I'm talking about. It's not fun. Glocks are so much easier. But... Got it in, and right away, I could tell, I think we're on the way to, like, fixed. So I've probably done about 200-ish uh, dry fires, and I can't get it to replicate the deal where it's not, it, it, where the sear would fail to grab the striker. So I haven't even changed the striker yet, but just changing the trigger bar geometry is changing the whole everything. So hold that thought. Let's take it over to the table. I'm about to pull the <laughs> what 13 year old striker out of here and we will take a look at the difference between the old one and the new one. All right, y'all, let's play every YouTuber's favorite game. Get your camera to focus on little tiny parts. <laughs> so obviously we've got the old original 2009 striker it's got the whole unit there on the left and this is the brand new just took it out of the packaging on the right so starting with this where the uh the little hook there where it hooks onto the sear itself you can see that angle kind of shows it a little bit of deformation here on the left one and let me see if I can bring it in. Okay, now you can see, got a nice crisp, sharp edge right there on this one and on the one on the left. We've got some misshapen, a little bit of gimpiness. Not horrible, but it's definitely not fresh and crisp either. Taking it over to this angle, kind of hard to tell, but okay, that kind of shows it again. Big old thumbs out of the way. But again, you can see a little bit of rounding there, and it's just a little little beaten on looking. From this angle, everything looks pretty pretty kosher. Not seeing a whole lot of difference. Okay, so next let's move to the striker end itself. Again, we've got the old and the new. And the overall length is pretty much there, but it's definitely, you know, it's seen thousands and thousands of rounds. A little bit rounded, not quite as sharp and pokey. Uh, but overall, I mean, I don't think that should have been affecting 
uh, performance necessarily. And, and I mean, it would, when, when it cycled correctly, it would go bang. So that I don't think was the problem as much as, and this is going to be the hardest one to get to focus and really show up. All right. Get a little pointer object here. Get these to focus. Bear with me. I apologize. Where the real deformation was going on is right there. If you see that rounded off kind of mangled corner versus what it's supposed to look like. So it does have a shape to it. So again, looking at it this way, not, well, yeah, you can, you can see a difference right there. Like that, that's a pretty visible, this thing has been just reshaped. So this is the leg that comes out and, and it's mostly, boy, right there on that corner. It's just rounded off. And it's even kind of, again, forgive my focusing issues, but there's a ledge when you go back this way. So what this does is when it's down in the striker channel, that little leg right there is what interfaces with the striker block. So, let me and actually just pop it back in for a second. So, when the striker block is depressed, whoa, <laughs> I don't have the back plate on. Uh, okay, press that down, that lets that lock in. So when the striker block is depressed, it allows the striker to release and come forward. If, the, if this is not completely up and out of the way, and yes, I'm pressing down, but relative to the way the gun actually works, this is up. So this is pressed up. If it's not all the way up and out of the way, then it will, as this is released, this leg will drag across. And that is what was giving me the light primer strikes. And again, it also caused, from years and years of being just barely out of time, it was enough to cause this deformation. So, enter the H trigger bar. So what's happening there is you've got, there's that shepherd's hook, there's the sear, and this is the leg that reaches up and pushes the striker block out of the way. And so the different shape on this shepherd's hook, what that does is, I, there we go. So I've got a little bit of gap now so that this can come back and push the striker all the way out of the way and then impact the sear, this being where the striker hooks onto the back of the sear. So it's just a slight, slight, slight timing difference. And I hope this is, I hope I'm making sense here, but it is the slightest, slightest of timing issues that let me put the gun. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out is the difference. This is the apex ultimate striker block. Notice it's, if I can get it to focus, it's round on the edges there. And this is the striker block that comes with the flat faced sear. Again, if I could get it to focus, that would be wonderful. There we go. And the difference, you can see the difference in the shape. And that is so that this will engage sooner than this one. So Apex tried to work around that timing issue, but if, if the shape of that shepherd's hook is too high and it hits the sear before this is all the way out of the way, you get the drag across the striker block. All right, so we've got the new striker and trigger bar installed. And what I notice right away is just the tiniest bit more travel. 
And what that is allowing is a little more time for that piece on the trigger bar that presses the striker block up and out of the way. It's allowing that to fully engage just, just the tiniest hair sooner before the loop on the trigger bar forces the sear up, releasing the striker. So here's the reset. And there's that just little bit more travel. And sometimes if you get lucky, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's see if I can get my, okay. So what we're gonna see right there is just the very, boy, it's not gonna focus. Just the, but anyway, right in this hole, you'll see the striker block being pushed up and out of the way. Like that. So there's that trigger bar. You see it kind of angle over. And then through this notch, you can see the sear, if I can get the angle right. There we go. So now you can sort of see them working in conjunction. See, notice the movement over on the right and then the movement that's the timing change right there. It's so, so subtle and yet hopefully all the difference in the world. All right, so hopefully that's the fix. I'll be doing lots and lots of dry practice before I get to the range the next time. And hopefully it will go click every time it's supposed to. And then I'll get it over to the range, put some live rounds through it before I have a class coming up in uh, like exactly one month now. So I'd like to have it running like solid and have it checked out before that class. But I have other guns that I can use if I have to. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, chances are, if you've stuck around this long, you're either a diehard fan or you were an m and nerd with some issues going on with a flat face trigger. If that was the case, I hope you found this helpful. I know it's, it's kind of detaily and fidgety and hard to exactly explain, but I did my best. So one last tip I wanted to throw in. If you have a striker fired gun that's having light primer strikes, a good thing to do is clean out that striker channel and then make sure your gun is safe and clear. Slide a pencil in. If it'll do that, it's probably hitting hard enough to ignite primers. <laughs> so that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and those of y'all kicking down through Buy Me A Coffee. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, be easy, y'all.